I'm Mary, and I make videos for CIMIT, which is an acronym for the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center. You may be thinking that doesn't add up, and that's because it doesn't. Our work started in Mexico in the 60s, so CIMIT comes from the Spanish equivalent. Basically, we work all around the world to make better seeds for farmers and help improve the way people grow that seed. A big thing we're doing is called conservation agriculture. It's based on the idea that if you don't move the soil as much as traditional agriculture, and you rotate crops so that soil will naturally replenish itself, and it can fight off bugs that get too comfortable when you grow the same thing year after year, and you leave some of what you grew on the field to hold in moisture and just decompose, well, that creates a healthier soil. And on top of that, farmers save time and money because they don't have to do so much work with tractors. So I recently went to check out how conservation agriculture is working in Chiapas. Chiapas is one of Mexico's poorest states. Its mountainous landscape has historically led to isolation and poor communication across the state. This, combined with continuing poverty, makes the challenges high in Chiapas. The state, however, also has the potential to act as Mexico's breadbasket. While many parts of Mexico require irrigation or are vulnerable to frost, in Chiapas it's really wet and tropical, so that gives it a very serious advantage. At the start of 2012, we started an office in Tuxtla Gutierrez, Chiapas. This office, along with some fields set up to demonstrate conservation agriculture, act as a hub. These hubs work just like transportation for airlines or trains. From these hubs, people come to learn about conservation agriculture in Masagro, a rural development program that makes a lot of this work possible in the first place. One of the goals of Masagro is to help Mexican farmers raise their yields, increase their incomes, and reduce the effects of climate change on agriculture in the country. So what does this Chiapas hub actually consist of? Basically, a dream team of six people, all under the age of 30. First, there's Jose Luis, who previously worked with hubs in central Mexico. His main hope is to see an increase in technicians who can help farmers correctly adopt conservation agriculture. Then there is Isaac, who I heard one of the farmers refer to as La Macanista. He works on machines and how to make them better. But something else about Isaac is he's from the area, so he knows all the regional words. And that's pretty important in a state that has one of the largest indigenous populations in Mexico. And Felipe, he's the data guy. He helps with logistics like starting trial plots for conservation agriculture, right in farmers' fields, or evaluating data the team collects. Gerardo is the youngest of the bunch. He used to work with indigenous communities in Oaxaca, his home state. Now he's the post-harvest specialist and works to spread technology like silos and super bags to farmers so that what they grow doesn't rot or get eaten by pests. And lastly, there's Jorge. Jorge is the manager, the leader, the coordinator of all the efforts. Above all, he wants people to understand conservation agriculture, what it is and how it can help. And the glue that binds and probably the only person who knows where each one of these guys are on any given day is Laura, working from the hub and helping with each logistical step. And an average day looks about like this. They start about 8 a.m. at the office, which unlike many of our more traditional locations is very much so in the city. They collect the materials and information needed for the day. And then they get into a truck branded with the Conservation Agriculture logo and they drive. Some number of hours later, they reach the farmer or other collaborator, say from a university, to assist with anything from information to field assessment to storage. I ask them what they look for in people to help them do this type of work. The work of technicians, which are pretty much like certified conservation agriculture caregivers. Other than the obvious things about skills and knowledge was sympathy, kindness. Because a lot of what they do depends on the relationship they create with farmers. And that goes beyond just agriculture. When it comes down to it, they're not only asking farmers to try something new. They're asking them to do something different from what their fathers taught them. 
both sides need to trust each other. And that trust comes from listening and understanding. Whether it's about a plague that's rotting a regional fruit in one of the farmer's backyards, or by knowing the names of their family members and sharing in moments like tortilla lessons. Or sitting down to lunch, they're probably better described as dinner, on a roadside, first break in a day in which I personally could feel the sun beating down. And still these guys just forget about even asking for food because they're too busy explaining conservation agriculture to a stranger who asked about the car logo. By the time I left Chiapas, the technology felt more like a movement, a philosophy. And it's just starting in Chiapas. And while it's a tough time, it's also when you have the chance to make the biggest impact. There's no past holding you back. That's a great responsibility. I watch these guys succeed in inspiring people, but I also watch them fail. We went to one of the fields where they had hoped to demonstrate the technology. They looked at the soil, counted the leaves on the plants, and at the end of the day, I could tell it wasn't going to work out. We had spoken before about quantity versus quality. Gerardo told me that they deal in small numbers now because they want to make sure that everything they do is with care. That they have to make a name for themselves first, by doing a good job, by having appropriate demonstration fields, and not by sacrificing quality. As we started our nearly three-hour journey back, I could feel the change in the air. But it didn't last long. Jorge put on soda stereo and we all sang along. In one part of the song it said, es difícil de creer, or it's hard to believe, and Jorge added, we're going to lose this platform. And we all laughed, even though we knew it meant challenges. These guys are fighting a good fight, and they do it with smiles. There's no doubt in my mind that they're going to make an impact. To aid in their efforts, I bought them a new car, logo and all, and gave them a mix CD to listen to on their many journeys.